I now request His Excellency Pramita Bandara Tenakun, the State Minister of Defence of Sri Lanka, to address the conclave. I want Namaskar, Honorable Minister of Defence of India, Sri Raj Raj Singh, State Minister of Defence and Tourism, Sri Ajay Bhatt, Honorable Ministers. Chief of Defence Staff, Commanders of the Tri Forces, Excellencies, and Distinguished Invitees. I am honoured and privileged to be here for the 12th DEF Expo 2022 and to take part in the IOR Defence Minister's Conclave. The noble objective of this Conclave is to foster peaceful and prosperous coexistence among the countries of the Indian Ocean region. It is therefore appropriate that this conclave is being hosted by India, whose long coastline makes it a key member of the Indian Ocean region. In line with India's South Asia policy of Sagar, DEF Expo helps to take this policy further by offering the military technical tools for IOR states to deal with non-traditional security threats. As an island nation, which has historically fostered maritime cooperation and relationship among countries in the Indo-Pacific region, Sri Lanka welcomes the timely objectives of this conclave, combined with the defense exhibition. This gathering of defense ministers of the Indian Ocean region recognizes the leading role of India in fostering collaboration to contain contemporary non-traditional security challenges in the Indian Ocean. As Indian Ocean nations, ensuring maritime security plays a pivotal role in our development process as this great ocean is our lifeline with the rest of the world. We should also strive to further strengthen maritime diplomacy across the Indian Ocean to converge with that of other oceans. In this contemporary world, the prominent feature of security policy is the defense industrial base. As an emerging global power, India leads the region in formulating far-reaching security doctrines, which may not only make the region a safer place, but also ensure its preservation. We take pride as India builds her first indigenously made aircraft carrier. The countless arrest of large-scale smuggling rackets, most importantly, dangerous drugs, arms, and people smuggling in this region is a result of shared intelligence between regional countries. On the other hand, in 2004, when the Boxing Day tsunami struck a most deadly strike on many coastal nations in this region, it is the regional partners that came to its immediate assistance before the others. Even when her own people were affected, India was among the first nations that came to our assistance. It is in this backdrop of close cooperation and bilateral ties that we have to face existing and future challenges, both within and outside our boundaries. As our President Honorable Ranil Vikramasinghe said, we are two sides of a single coin. The Defense Ministry of Sri Lanka has taken the timely initiative to also provide a forum through the Colombo Security Conclave to further discuss how to strengthen regional security. So the way forward is together rather than alone. The Indian Ocean should be a stable region and open to all for peaceful reasons. So the need for a code of conduct for the Indian Ocean is felt as a need of the hour. This would be important for international navigation and commerce in this ocean. This ocean, as a vital channel of sea communication, facilitates a large volume of energy, raw material, and food supply 
between the East and West. Thus, it is imperative that we keep it safe. We don't want this to be an area of conflict and war or the playground of world military powers. I would like to extend my best wishes to all partners of DEF Expo for organizing such an impressive exhibition. I look forward to the deliberations of the Defense Ministry, Minister's Conclave 2022. <clears throat> Let me conclude by once again reassuring all our Indian Ocean partners of Sri Lanka's commitment to maintain close cooperation for bilateral and regional development. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency.